Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. The mystery of the wandering stars. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. Imagine that you are an ancient Egyptian, Babylonian, Greek, or Roman, and that you enjoy stargazing. The difference, however, between stargazing back then and stargazing now would be quite dramatic because there would be no urban lighting and no industrial pollution. So the heavens would be filled with many more stars than we can see today, unless we go to the tops of the highest mountains or as far away from urban lighting as possible. Now, as an ancient human, you would notice that most of the stars remain in fixed positions relative to one another, and that they only change their positions in entire groups, depending on the hour of the night or the season of the year. For instance, whenever you looked at the stars we now call the Big Dipper, they would appear to be in the same positions relative to each other as would the stars we call Cassiopeia, Orion the Hunter, Scorpius the Scorpion, etc. You would know where they are located at various times of the night and year, and you could even use them as a nightly and seasonal clock, which we can still do. But there would be some stars that puzzle you, in particular five of them, because not only do they slowly change their positions among the fixed patterns of stars, they also change their brightness, being sometimes very dim and sometimes very bright. On top of which, one would occasionally stop, go backwards for a while, then reverse direction and go forward again. Talk about weird. Now, the ancient Greeks called all the objects in the night sky asterisks, which means stars. In fact, that's where we get our star-shaped pattern on computers, the asterisks. But the seven peculiar objects were given a special name from the rest. They were called asterisk planetis. The Greek word planetis means wandering, so the asterisk planetis were the wandering stars which today we simply call the planets. And in much of Western civilization, we still use the planet names derived from the Romans, who derived their planet names from the Greeks and Babylonians. We know them as Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, plus the Moon and our Sun. Together they are known as the Seven classical planets, and our ancestors thought they were deities, gods who could influence human behavior. And although they came up with some very, very clever solutions as to why they changed position, none of them were correct. Today we know these objects wander because they are so much, much closer to us than the stars, and that they, along with our Earth, are in constant rapid motion around the sun. And strangely, every one of us still pays daily tribute to these seven ancient classical planets because the seven days of the week are named after them in almost all languages. In English, Sunday is named for the sun, Monday for the moon, Tuesday for Mars, Wednesday for Mercury, Thursday for Jupiter, Friday for Venus, and Saturday for Saturn. Think of that next moon day when you have to get up to go to work. Keep looking up. Make the Stars Your Own is available on DVD or VHS for $19.95. In addition, Stargazing with Jack Horkheimer, Cosmic Comics for the Sky Watcher is also available for $19.95.